here we go. Hey guys, it's Riley, and welcome to today's episode of Trans Education on this very fine Tuesday. Today I wanted to cover a topic on trans issues, more of trans masculinity that is very, very close to my heart because I feel like I am directly affected by it, and I feel like a lot of trans guys are also directly affected by it. Basically, the title of this video is going to be Not the Hot One, and it's going to be stereotypes of trans men and how they are expected to be. When you go online, and especially Tumblr, and you search through trans tags, specifically trans masculine tags, it seems like there's such an expectation in the community that everyone has to have the perfect body, be the perfect height, be stereotypically masculine, be straight, and it's all very potent. And for trans men like myself who do not fit any of those molds, it's kind of difficult because you see other people and you're like, oh, I guess that's what I'm supposed to be, like, as a trans man, but that's not the case. I have some points that I want to touch on, so I'm going to start doing that right now. One of the biggest misconceptions I feel that there is about trans men and their expectations and people's expectations for trans men is weight. You see a lot of trans men online and there are trans men who are publicized that are thin, that are, like, or fit, thin or fit. And you don't see the bigger trans guys being put under the spotlight as much because of the conventional attractiveness. So everyone who's seeing a trans guy is expecting them to be fit and thin, and that's just not the reality of the situation. And I'm gonna say the same with height. I was cursed with being short. I got my mom's jeans. So even if I identified as female, I would still be short. I'm five foot three, I'm short. There is such an idea that these trans men are like taller, like five, six or taller. I'm very, very short. I am short and I am fat. So there's two things right there that I do not fit the hot mold of a trans man. Another thing I wanna to touch on is health because I, am kind of healthy. I'm not very healthy, but I'm not dying of something. But there is such a culture online that makes it seem like all trans men are into health and fitness and exercise and going to the gym and all of that. I am going to try to do that, but I'm going to do that for me, not because I'm trans. It seems like every person nowadays who is involved somehow with trans culture expects these trans guys to be very masculine and very like into the gym thing and like into fitness like ooh kale ooh working out and that's just not true and it's not honest and it's not accurate and kind of again with health then you've got like mental health you expect and I say you expect and because the cultures that I've been surrounded with online and everyone's got these molds of how a trans man is supposed to be or supposed to look or supposed to feel and even trans men do because that's just kind of how we're surrounded by it. because there are cis people who are like oh well you're not trans unless you and that they have no right to say that first of all but people always expect a trans person to be in good mental health if they accept the trans community because obviously if like you're not like supportive of the trans community you think they have a mental disorder most of the time but you think like, oh, you're trans, like you're trans, if you're transitioning, like you're happy and you're not going to have mental health issues. And that's, again, one of those stereotype things, because you see a lot of these trans guys online, too, who seem to have like the perfect lives, but that's not always the case. Me, I, this is another mold that I don't fit into, is that I have had very severe mental health issues and I've worked very, very hard to get where I am today to be comfortable with myself and to be recovering and I think I can pride myself on that, but when I tell people that I've had issues with that in the past, they're like, is it because you're trans? Um, and some people are like, well, if you have those issues, it's because you're like pretending to be trans and you're putting yourself through that, which is absolutely ridiculous and makes me so upset because like why would anybody put themselves through this like just for shits and giggles like I don't understand why people say that the next two I want to touch on I feel are definitely more apparent than the other ones in the community and these are the last two I want to talk about and that is stereotypical masculinity and sexuality a lot of people assume that because you identify as male if you're trans if you are a trans masculine person that you have to be masculine and that's not true because 
I, I personally, I'm a guy, like I'm trans masculine, like I am a trans man and I identify as male, I use masculine pronouns, like great, that's who I am, like that, that's me, but I am not a masculine person, if that makes sense. I feel like masculinity and femininity is all based on personality and not gender. Certainly there are like expressions and things that have to relate to gender, but I feel like the majority of it is all someone's personality. My personality is really feminine. I really like feminine things and I have feminine mannerisms and that's just how I am, but that doesn't mean that I'm not trans masculine. That doesn't mean that I'm not a man. That doesn't mean that I'm not using male pronouns. I just, my personality is a feminine personality and I think a lot of people expect because we're trans masculine and we're changing denders, going from female to male, that, female to male, that we have to be the stereotypical, like, macho, like, man, man, and it's not true, because there's all these, like, false expectations of everybody, and I saw a post on Tumblr a while ago, and it's something I resonate with completely, and it's some, a trans guy posted it, and if I can find it, I'll link it, but it was one of my favorite posts, and basically what it said is, if a cis guy wears nail polish or a dress, he is a staple for gender roles and breaking down barriers, but if I do it, I'm going back into the closet. And I feel like that is such a strong statement because that's how people view it. That is how a lot of people nowadays view it because if there is a cis guy that is painting his nails and wearing flower crowns and like wearing feminine clothing or likes the color pink, I guess then he's a staple for breaking down gender barriers and gender binary. But as soon as a trans guy does stuff like that, it, we are going back into the closet because it's a feminine thing to do. I don't understand that. We are different from cis people, but as far as like, I'm a guy and I'm gonna do feminine things, they're a guy, they're gonna do feminine things, it doesn't matter that we're cis or trans in that aspect. And it really frustrates me how people think that if a trans guy does something that's feminine, that they're going back into the closet or that they're detransitioning because it's a load of bull crap. I am like over a year on testosterone, I think I'm like 15 months on tea, which is first of all, awesome, praise, uh, and I'm not gonna stop taking tea. And I enjoy it, I mean, I don't enjoy it because like it's miserable shots and grossness, but it's something that makes me feel better about myself, but like, people are confused when I, like, I take testosterone, but then like, I, li I enjoy painting my nails, I like flower crowns, I like crop tops, like, and people perceive it as, oh, I'm detransitioning, oh, like, I'm going back to the closet, but like, no, I'm still a guy, even if I like these things, and there's such a stereotype against trans men that they, we have to fit this, like, masculine mold because we are transitioning from female to male. I don't like saying female to male because like literally we were never female, it's just we we're never female, but that's like the sign, like the health term or whatever. Because like we we're never female just because we had a vagina does not mean we're female, like I, ugh. But it's not, it shouldn't be an expectation that a trans guy has to be so stereotypically masculine and it really makes me upset. Leading off of that is the sexuality. People automatically write it off as like a trans guy being straight. A lot of the trans guys I know came out as a lesbian before they came out as trans. I did it because I thought it would make my transition easier on my family. So like, oh, like he already likes girls and then now like the gender spectrum is adjusting. But a lot of people come out of that, and so people kind of expect trans guys to be straight or into women because they're guys. And again, I'm gonna make another video on like assumption of sexuality, but it's so annoying how they think like we're all straight because I, I'm gay. I am, I am gay. <laughs> we know, everybody, like people know I'm gay. But the thing is, is when I was starting to like come to terms with it, well, first of all, my parents knew and they told me they knew and they were like, yeah, you should have like, asked us six months ago, we knew, and I was like, thanks for, you know, helping me, but people are like, oh, you like, they're, they're, they get so confused because they're like, oh, you like guys, and I'm like, yeah, I like guys, and they're like, well, why didn't you just stay a straight girl, wouldn't it be easier on you, and I'm like, oh, lord, it makes me so upset because I am, first of all, not a girl, never was a girl, never will be a girl, ever in my life, nothing against girls, 
Just not me, obviously. Just don't understand why people like assume that we have to be masculine or that we have to be like straight. Because when people think of trans guys, like you think that they're supposed to be like this stereotypical like mold of a man who's like going from like this feminine figure to like this masculine figure, and that's not what happens. I, when I came out, after I came out, I tried so hard to fit the stereotypical mold of masculinity. I wore cargo shorts and bulky shoes and like snapbacks, but like snapbacks like a douchebag. Not the way I wear them now. The way I wear them now I think looks cute and I really enjoy it and most of the time I wear them with like crop tops. So <laughs> but I was like trying to fit this stereotypical mold of masculinity because I was so worried that if I didn't people would be like, oh you're not really trans. And so I, I did that for years and I think it was like when I turned 16 or no like when I turned like 15 or like halfway through my 15 halfway through when I was 15 I was like screw this I gotta like I gotta be myself I gotta embrace myself I gotta do what I want to do and that's what I'm doing now like I paint my nails a lot I've grown them out and they're like nice kind of and I wear what I want like I have crop tops I enjoy that kind of stuff so many things here that I could like splurge off of and make videos on there are so, so many molds for how a trans man should be and it's so bad and if you're a trans guy watching this I want you to know that like you can be yourself nobody else can tell you what to do like the trans community is so diverse and so different everybody's different everybody experiences their own transition differently some people don't physically transition some people like physically transition completely like me I'm probably not going to completely physically transition top surgery and I'm good there's not a specific way that you have to be you have to be yourself and I'm so incredibly stuck on this be yourself it doesn't matter if you're feminine if you're gay like be whoever you want to be you want to be fit you do you want to fit the stereotypical mold if that's you go right ahead and do it there's nothing wrong with that all I'm trying to say is that there should not be such a mold for every single trans guy because we're all so different. I am not the hot one. I am so not the hot one. And when I say that because you look at these trans guys and you're like, oh, he's gorgeous. I can never believe he was ever f female and like he's straight and he works out and he's like fits these stereotypical molds of masculinity. I'm sitting here like I'm gay, I'm short, I'm fat and I'm feminine and a lot of people think that this is all like not what a trans man is supposed to be but like really there's not a specific way for a trans man to be and I felt like this was very important to talk about before the new year because I want you guys to know like if you're a trans guy going into this year if you're gonna come out if you're already out like if you're already transitioning you need to be yourself you don't have to fit these stupid molds that people put on you there's nothing there's no requirements for being a trans man None. Be masculine identifying and not cis. I think that's it. Like, AFAB and you're good, I think. Like, even not. I don't know. Because you can be trans and, like, I, I, it's, it's just a, it's a very big spectrum. <laughs> it, you just, if you're trans, you're trans. Like, you know you're trans. Like, identify as trans good. Like, if you're trans masculine, awesome. There's no requirements for how you have to act or what you have to do to be trans. If you say you're trans, you're trans. Great. Cool. And that's just how it is. And you guys, like, please be yourselves. Please, 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 please. If you guys need anything, like, regarding this, please leave a comment in the description because I want to be able to help you. I want to make videos on all this stuff. If you need to reach out personally, follow me on Twitter. DM me. My DMs are public. And you can talk to me and chat with me through there. Also, on Snapchat. If you add me on Snapchat, I'll probably add you back. I will do anything I can to help you guys and break this, like, mold or whatever you need. And, yeah, that's, that's all I've got today. I'm just... I feel like I could rant on for hours, but I'd get really off topic. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a very important video that I felt that I needed to make. And if you enjoyed it, please make sure you tell me you enjoyed it by liking this video, giving it a big thumbs up, and commenting down below what you enjoyed about it or things that I could improve on or like video ideas that I could stem off of this because I'm always looking for stuff like that. Stuff that you guys need, stuff that will help you. 
helps me help you, you get the gist. If you'd like to, you can subscribe to my channel. I post these videos, which are part of my hashtag trans education series, every Tuesday, and then a regular, I say regular, but it's like really random stuff, main channel video every Thursday. So two videos a week coming from me. You can subscribe if you want, that'd be cool if you did. I'm also hosting a giveaway right now, and it's gift keyboard. It'll be linked below. I don't know if the stuff will be gone or whatever. Uh, by the time this video goes out, but if it is, just go check, go check, links below it. I'm not gonna talk about it a lot, but there, there, it's there. And be sure, if you want to, to follow me on all my social media, it's at the Riley Kyle on literally every platform. All of my links are in the description. I'm also on a collab channel called Quite the Collab, the link is down below, and I have a side channel, which I did Vlogmas on, so there's like 25 vlogs that are like new and good and cool, so if you would like to see that kind of stuff, you can go check out my side channel too. Well. That's it, and I love you guys, and I will see you on Thursday. Bye.